Hey, everybody. I know that we're each joining the call here. Please just take a moment and um, we'll wait for everyone to join. You're all joining the Jamboree on the air, Jamboree on the internet 2022, how to build a pocket medical kit. I know folks are still coming into the room, so we'll just give everyone a moment and we'll uh, begin discussing the pocket kit in just a little bit. Thanks so much for everyone joining and uh, allow me to say welcome to just some of them, including Alberto, Edward, Elizabeth. It's a pleasure having all of you guys here. Thanks so much, Ruben, Richard, Scott. It's fantastic seeing folks from around the world and always thrilled to host here. Again, Jamboree on the air, Jamboree on the internet, 2022, how to build a pocket medical kit. Folks are still joining the uh, presentation. Excited to have you all here, um, but I want to let you know a few things before we begin. First and foremost, my name is Philip. Um, I do have a website where you're able to download this entire presentation, as well as all of my other presentations on aviation, on safety, on um, fun things like uh, knives and metal and uh, camping in general. So please do take a peek there. The website's at the bottom. We'll talk about it at the end of the presentation as well. Um, but I wanted to make sure that for those who stay for the entire presentation um, or have to leave early, uh, there are resources available to you so you're able to do this activity at home. Again, for our newcomers, we're just waiting for everyone to join the call here. Um, it's the 2022 Jamboree on the internet, building a life-saving pocket first aid kit. Um, again, a welcome to some of our uh, new faces and new folks that are joining the call from around the world. Thanks so much. Sheldon uh, joining, uh, as well as a number of others. Let me do a quick introduction to myself just before getting started. Um, my name is Philip. I'm from the United States of America. I am a member of the Boy Scouts of America, and um, I host every year this session on building a pocket medical kit. Um, I serve in the Boy Scouts as the vice chair for supporting world scouting, but in my day job and in my career, um, I actually specialize in emergency disaster and crisis response. So I can't thank you guys enough for joining this particular session, and I can't thank uh, enough the people who allow me to do uh, the work that I love doing. I hope that you guys are all as excited as I am to get started. So let's get started. Let's talk first about why pocket kits matter. Why does it matter to have your own medical gear? and first aid equipment with you? Well, the first reason is why we do scouts in the first place. We want you, young people, to be self-reliant, prepared, and independent. We want you to be able to take care of yourself. We want you to be healthy. We want those cuts covered. We want blisters prevented. And ultimately, we want you to have fun out in the great outdoors. And for you adults, we want to start a conversation. What should units carry for safety equipment? What should patrols carry for first aid supplies? And this pocket kit is a really great way to start talking about safety and start talking about what scouts can do and use in case of a small injury. This is the pocket kit that we are going to talk about today. Um, it doesn't have uh, too many items, but it doesn't have too few items either, fitting perfectly in one's pocket and able to be taken all around the world. Let's talk about um, then what that kit contains individually. I hope everyone's ready to begin. Here is that pocket medical kit laid out. Um, let's start with the center item. That is, of course, the actual case that we use for the kit. 
I love this case. Um, it's actually designed to make headphones uh, fit in your pocket, but it's great for me. It fits all of my um, stuff and it again fits perfectly with my uniform. But you don't have to go out and purchase something uh, and you certainly don't have to use my favorite case. There's lots of options available to you. One is a plastic bag or a little cloth bag. They have these wonderful cases that are waterproof and help protect electronics, but just as good for medicine, as well as little containers that used to hold candy. Perfect for fitting into one's pocket and storing all of that stuff. An eyeglass case, a simple solution uh, that makes it really handy while traveling. So that's the case, and these are the items that I'm going to tell you about to put into that case that I think are the best and most essential ones. The first one is Band-Aids. Band-Aids, or known in some country as plasters, are little adhesive strips that on the back of them have a little space for where the cut can go. And this helps keep your wound clean, safe, and um, it, uh, it speeds up the healing process overall. I love these flexible fabric strips, but any brand is okay and any style is okay. What I think is important is that you think about what size Band-Aids you want. Um, whether you find that normally injuries are on your hands and you want a small Band-Aid, or if you often have larger injuries on elbows or knees, those require different size Band-Aids. Um, and indeed, if you're a small scout, you might want smaller band-aids. And if you're a big scout, you might want bigger band-aids. So the next item is something that goes right along with that. In this case, here in the United States, we call it Neosporin or triple antibiotic. Triple antibiotic is a type of medicine, and that medicine kills all of the germs, bacteria, and virus that could potentially get into a cut or that are in a cut already. It also speeds up the healing process. And so I always use this um, whenever I am uh, putting on a Band-Aid with a cut. They come in these really great little packets. Not only Neosporin makes these, um, but there are a number of other companies that make triple, triple antibiotic ointment. Um, they're wonderful to carry light, easy, and essential for every cut, in my opinion. So we hope that that is um, something that you are interested in carrying uh, in your pocket kit as well. The next item is a BZK wipe. BZK is an abbreviation of a really long uh, chemical, but that chemical is really fantastic at again, killing germs, um, at killing viruses, killing bacteria, and it doesn't sting. So if you've ever had someone say, hey, uh, you know, we need to clean your cut and you use soap and water, or you use an alcohol wipe, um, those sometimes can hurt a lot. These wipes don't hurt. And sometimes you'll find them on airplanes or in food kits, uh, because again, they are so convenient and they are so helpful for cleaning hands or cleaning injuries. In fact, an alcohol wipe can actually hurt an injury by killing the good cells as well as the bad cells. So I always recommend these little towelettes in medical kits, especially when working with young kids who are afraid of those wipes stinging and hurting more than the cut itself. For those who are just joining, we're going through the pocket medical kit item by item here. Again, these are the things that I carry and the things that I recommend. At the very end of this presentation, I'll tell you how you can purchase some of these items, but you don't have to purchase the exact items that I have here. I'm just getting you started and just letting you know some of the things that you might be interested in looking at and considering. The next item has been essential for me in the past few years. And that is a Purell hand wipe. It has alcohol in it. And so it's wonderful. In fact, perhaps the best way 
to kill germs on the outside of your body. Um, and so it's great at killing those viruses that can make us sick, including coronavirus or flu um, or other things that might be on food or in the dirt that we play in. So Purell wipes, a great tool for cleaning our hands as well as the objects around us in case of an issue. The next item uh, goes a little bit back to Band-Aids, um, but it's a special kind of Band-Aid. It's a hydro seal Band-Aid. Um, if you open up this Band-Aid, it looks a little bit different. Um, it's actually a large piece of gel. And that large piece of gel does two things. One is that it, it protects like a shield, um, a blister that may have popped. Sometimes when you hike, and your shoe rubs a lot, sometimes it'll create a bloody mark or a white bubble, and that's called a blister. And so this Band-Aid can be put over that, and it creates a cushion in order to prevent it from getting worse. But even better than that, this Band-Aid covers up the wound and helps keep the white blood cells inside of your body and helps keep them to heal and to react to the bad germs that might have gotten in or might be coming in. Those little white blood cells are like the soldiers or the police of your body. And so this Band-Aid helps keep them inside of you and help keeps them working their best to keep you safe. But at the end of the day, we want to keep you enjoying the outdoors. And this is one great way so your trip doesn't stop early. Another option is something that we call moleskin. It's a thick type of cotton. And so you can put it somewhere before a blister starts, or you can make these little donuts and put them around a blister so the blister doesn't grow or doesn't pop. Lots of options available. But this is my favorite, especially when that blister does pop in order to protect you. The next item, also important for hikes or spending time near the water, is an insect repellent. Um, in this particular case, the one that I have here is in a little packet. It's not in a spray can, it's not in a heavy bottle, because you can't carry those in a pocket. And sometimes um, your day may start with no bugs, but it ends with lots of bugs. Maybe the bugs come out at night or maybe you're going near water or going from a high altitude to a low altitude. These little wipes are fantastic for uh, keeping those bugs away from you. Uh, there's lots of different brands, including ones that have the chemical DEET and ones that do not have the chemical DEET. And for you um, around the world, you may recognize some of the diseases that mosquitoes carry. Zika, dengue, West Nile virus, very serious diseases um, that a simple wipe is able to prevent. Now we can't prevent every bug bite or every sting. And so this is a particularly fun item to keep in your medical kit. It's called Sting Kill. It's an anesthetic, which means that it makes the area that you rub it on numb. It makes it feel better. So while this won't cure a disease, it can make especially a younger scout confident about going into the outdoors and return to the fun of playing with friends. If a bee stings or if a bug bites, um, this can be a really great item. Now, there are lots of uh, information on the back of these, and so I just wanted to quickly highlight that for parents. Um, you have benzocaine and lidocaine, as well as other options you may find online. Um, in this case, 20% benzocaine is the same as lidocaine, and you can see these both contain alcohol, um, and they both contain other ingredients like menthol. Uh, so you just have to read the back and know that uh, these are equivalent products um, you don't have to always buy the most expensive or any of these. You may have in your country um, a different way of relieving bug bites that you like more. 
So put that in your medical pocket kit. You may not need it for you, but if someone else near you might need it or appreciate it. Let's talk about one of the most dangerous things when going outdoors, and that is the sun. If you don't get enough water, if you don't get enough salt and vitamins and minerals, it actually can be deadly if you spend too much time out in the sun or out in the heat. And so I recommend having a drink pack. Um, in this case, I have with me something called IV liquid. On screen, I have something called Scratch. There's lots of brands that are available to you, but I recommend two special things. One is electrolytes. That's a type of salt that your muscles need in order to keep working all day long, especially when hiking in hot weather or doing sports. You would know this, of course, from Gatorade and other major brands. But something else that I find helpful is when extra vitamins are put into the drink mix. Because if you don't have enough magnesium or potassium inside of your body, then actually you can get things like cramps or headaches or other medical issues while having fun. So consider a drink mix filled with vitamins and again, filled with those all important electrolytes so that you are safe outdoors. The next item, preventing sun issues in the first place. And that includes sunscreen. Sunscreen is fantastic at not only keeping you sunburn free, but also can prevent skin cancer. So I want to make sure to share this with you. I always carry a pack or two of this with me wherever I go. Again, I may have remembered my sunscreen, but others around me may not have. So uh, this is something I always try to bring as a preventative measure. The next item is an unusual one. It's tissues. I carry this little tiny pack of tissues wherever I go. And I happen to get that free from an airplane when I once uh, flew. So you can find these items for free, but if you're able to put a few tissues um, into your medical kit. They're great for a runny nose or for cleaning up uh, blood or something else, but they're also great for toilet paper in case you have an emergency and don't have toilet paper around. The other thing that's great about tissues is that they are a marketing opportunity. There's many companies that allow you to print information, custom information, onto tissue packs. And so in this case, you could, for instance, put key medical information. The image there is of what we call the recovery position. One of the most important things for helping to um, save someone who might uh, be terribly sick um, and might uh, die if not put in the proper position. And so the recovery position, very helpful while waiting for rescue. Another thing you could put is put your troop logo onto uh, a pack of tissues. Make it something that helps spread the message about your local scout unit. So many options and even more options when it comes to your emergency card. This is great for younger scouts so that they're able to have with them the name of a scout leader, a phone number, contact information, all in one simple place. And I always have one with me as well, just in case I lose my um, uh, medical kit or in case I need help contacting people. But there's more than one way to do a card like this, including inviting people to your next scout unit, letting them know where your scout unit is, or telling them more about scouting in general lots of fun ways that you could have an emergency contact card custom printed for your needs. So that's the items that I would recommend you put into your medical kit. But people always say, doesn't that seem like a lot of stuff? Doesn't that seem like a lot of money? Well, if you've been watching the prices at the bottom, the total price of everything you're seeing on the screen is 
cents. And I'll tell you at the end how you can purchase it. I don't sell these and I don't make any money, but there's lots of companies that sell Band-Aids and sell drink mix. So you can pick your favorites and you can pick the ones that cost the right amount of money for you. But before we talk about purchasing or building the kit, let me just show you what my kit looks like. Um, as you can see, I carry slightly bigger Band-Aids. I also carry some other items in there that I would like to talk about for just a moment. So here are some of the extras. The first one is medications. My favorite three medications to carry are Aleve in case of a sprained ankle, Benadryl for allergies or sleep, and Tylenol for headaches and other types of pain. So the reason that I recommend uh, carrying these particular medications is because they come in these little packs. And I have some of them here. You can see that they're nice and small. You can see that um, they are individually labeled. They're individually dosed, which means that you can't take too much um, or too little um, if you just take one pack. And especially for adults, I recommend carrying these types of medications. I don't recommend for young children to carry these types of medications. Um, and I also uh, don't recommend carrying too much because it's just a pocket medical kit. We don't want a whole bottle um, of a certain type of medication, just something in case of an emergency. There's lots of medications that sell these types of packs and your country may have different medications than we have so pick the ones that make sense to you. The options are truly limitless and I want you to choose what you find is comfortable and what you find is most safe. The final two medications I'll mention here before we leave is Pepto-Bismol, which is great for making your stomach feel better and bare aspirin. Bare aspirin can actually save lives in case of a heart attack. And so it's pretty amazing that your pocket medical kit could actually save a life with this. But it's also important to remember that bare aspirin and other aspirin products are not appropriate for young children because of something called Ryers syndrome. And so again, being aware of that as an adult or as an older scout can help you build a kit that you are comfortable with. The next item is a tick key. Here in the United States, we have little bugs and the little bugs can bite you and hold on. They suck blood like mosquitoes. Um, they're not just annoying or scary, they actually can carry bad diseases. And so the best way possible to remove them is something called a tick key. That is something uh, where you put it over the little bug and then the bug's mouth comes right to that sharp point and he says, oh boy, I think a bird is going to eat me. And so he jumps off and runs away. That's the best way because if you squeeze him with tweezers or your fingers, or if you try a different method of removing the little bug, he sometimes can have a virus inside of him and then give you that virus and we wouldn't want that. So a tick key is something that I carry in my pocket kit. Another item, Visine. Visine is little drops that you can put into your eyes. In this case, I have a little itty bitty tube here. So it's perfect for carrying around, just has eight or 10 drops. But in an emergency like dust in your eyes, a little stick in your eyes, or even worse, cement dust in your eyes during a service project, very scary. This is something that can help you protect your vision. So I always keep one with me um, uh, in case of an urgent matter. And then feminine products. Uh, not only are there female adult leaders who I would recommend uh, this to, but there are female youth uh, scouts uh, who could certainly carry this. But I would also recommend this for men and for boys because this medical kit is not just for you as an individual, it's for your friends, it's for your family, it's for your neighbors, it's for your community. So feminine products are one of the options available to you to add to your kit. 
And then water purification. Um, there's nothing more important than having safe drinking water. This is a simple way to not only remove all of the germs, all of the bacteria, um, and all of the viruses from a tank of water, but also it removes all of the mud, all of the sand, all of the things that are floating inside of that water and helps them sit all the way to the bottom. It's a wonderful tool, can't recommend it enough. And they come in this wonderful small size, even though they purify 10 liters of water, just great. Final item that I always add to my kit is a mental health card. It's not just cuts. It's not just sprained ankles. Sometimes there's an emergency where the person doesn't have any vis visible wounds, but has been hurt. And so this card helps address mental health issues. Adults, if you're more interested in these, uh, interested in printing them, all of the files are available free of charge. Please take them, edit them, adapt them however you see fit. I'll give you the link here at the end of the presentation. This is something that I think is fantastic. It was actually developed by the Icelandic Red Cross um, and adapted from there. So three ways forward now that you know all the cool things that you can put in your kit. The first one, is be a thrifty scout, save money and save time. Just go around your house, find all the little medical things, all the little travel things, lay them out and think about what you might want in a pocket medical kit. Ask your parents to look out for freebies at hotels or trade shows and conventions. Even at restaurants, when they have those little to-go salt packets or sugar packets, there's all sorts of creative ways to add things to your pocket kit. Option number two is to visit a local grocery store, a major supermarket um, or, or retail. In this case, I have a photo here of what I saw in an airport with all those little sized items. And then you can purchase just the items that you most want in that pocket size. And whether, you know, it's a, child walking along a path or whether it's an adult driving to an office or whether it's a whole scout group going on a wonderful trip to another country. You can have all of those small items perfectly suited to your needs. Of course, you also can search Amazon for the brands that you most like and finding that right size. Um, the final uh, one here of a way forward is a full kit, the kit that I've just discussed here. Um, that kit uh, has uh, all the ingredients you just talked about. The link at the end of this presentation will just be finishing up here uh, in uh, a few minutes uh, before I turn it over to questions, just about five more minutes. Um, all of those Amazon links, all of those products, I put them into easy grab containers. I talk with the older scouts about how to put them all together, how to use each one. And then the older scouts lead the activity for the younger scouts. And every time we do the activity, I ask last year's scouts, what did you like and what did you not like? What did you use? What did you not use? And so this is a great way of having scouts lead the project and understanding what scouts really want. And it's fantastic because it does two whole requirements, the tenderfoot rank requirement here in the Boy Scouts of America, as well as the first aid merit badge um, of Scouts BSA. So um, you may have requirements in your country and in your scout program that you need to create a medical kit. This is a great easy way to do that. So let me finish up here with enforcing the use of the kit. Check before trips, do I have my kit? If someone needs help with medicine, don't just do it for them, teach them. Demonstrate that skill and that proper use, especially for adults. Have refill stations so that if your whole unit has the same band-aids and the same bug wipes inside of your medical kit, 
bring some extras on the camp out. So if someone uses one of their medical items, they can immediately refill it and be ready again. And then I have extra kits to give away. And again, that's where that card comes in that lets the person know what unit you're from, how to contact you, how they can donate or how their child can join your program. For $5, it's a wonderful gift for someone that you care about. And indeed, you can always add more. You can add large things, you can add small things, you can add computerized things. And as you do that, you start a progression. You have that pocket kit, which is great for young scouts and is water resistant and can save an entire trip. But you add that to a few more items and suddenly you have a patrol kit, something that's shareable, something that prevents disease as well as treats it. And then you add that to even more and you have an entire unit kit. Just start somewhere small. And if you need somewhere for help, I not only have this entire presentation online, but I have lists of things you can add to medical kits, checklists for having safe activities outdoors, and so much more. That list is right here at the URL at the very bottom. I'm super excited to answer all of your questions and we'll be really um, uh, excited to hear what you would like to hear more about. Um, it's always a pleasure. Um, we have 15 minutes for uh, questions and answers, so I'll be super excited to talk with each of you about them. Just while we wait for folks to type their uh, questions here again are all of the elements to that kit so that you're able to see it. And then let me also just show you the five things in addition to this kit. The kit's number five, but I always recommend carrying food and water, weather gear, a whistle in case of emergencies so that you can contact others, and of course your personal medications, um, emergency medications like EpiPen, insulin inhalers, so important to carry those with you. For adults, that's your medical forms in the Boy Scouts of America, there's special medical forms, but you know, you wanna know uh, who is in your group and if they have any major medical conditions, unit policies, unit plans, safety trip plans, including where's the nearest hospital and what are the directions there in case we lose phone signal, a mobile phone, which has so many great tools, including a flashlight, magnifying glass, and compass. And again, this pocket kit, there's so many ways to, uh, to use the pocket medical kit. So please do um, consider these items and know that there's an entire another presentation just about this, um, and that is how to be safe on campouts, uh, and that is at this URL preparing for a scouting emergency. So please don't hesitate to download that. No attribution required. Please feel free to, uh, to steal it. Well, we have dozens and dozens of people here. So I'm excited to uh, hear your questions. Um, you can also let me know where you're from. Um, I know yesterday we had one or two questions about the medications allowed in each country and whether they can put herbal medicines, or if they can put other types of things in their kit? And the answer is yes. Anything that you want to put in your kit um, is a great idea, so long as it's age appropriate, and so long as it makes you feel confident about going out on big and exciting trips. That's what we want for scouts like you. So, um, First question uh, that I'll answer here is one about a large cut. What if someone has a large cut and they don't have this medical kit with them? Well, I wanna start with the fact that you should always have this medical kit with you. Um, but in the case of a large injury, the most important thing is pressure, which is that you want to squeeze the injury. You want to squeeze the injury because that causes your skin and the little tubes that your blood flows through to squish. 
And just like a small road or a small tunnel or like squishing a hose, um, uh, that stops the blood from being able to exit. And so that helps the body heal itself more quickly. It helps the blood to stick to itself, which is called clotting. And uh, those techniques are key techniques above just the tools that you have the actual way that you treat people like the recovery position. Uh, actually, um, it was uh, not in this. Oops, I did it this way. Um, on the tissues, we talked about the recovery position. Uh, this is not working for me, but on the tissues package, um, we talked about the recovery position and knowing those medical skills is super great. Let me see if I can find that recovery uh, position again. Yeah. So here are those tissues. And this is that recovery position right up here. So this makes sure that in case the person vomits, or in case the person has any uh, major issues, they are on their side for rescue. Um, in just a moment, we'll be sending around the code for everyone as the challenge code. Um, but let me go to another quick question here, which is what is the best pocket item for diarrhea? That's a great question. And there are a few different options. Excuse me. There are a few different options available to you. So the first one. Sorry. The first one is in the medications. Actually, the medications are gonna be a little further back. In fact, they're both gonna be in medications. So let me just quickly, quickly scroll back to medications. Okay, so again, these are the three medications that I carry, but there are so many more. And in this case, Pepto-Bismol is one that's great for an upset stomach or diarrhea. And there's another one down here at the bottom. Uh, I'd have to read more carefully to make sure I, I see it, but uh, it's an anti-diarrheal um, and that might indeed be uh, Dyphen, uh, but I thought that was an antihistamine. So, um, uh, or Diamode, Diamode perhaps. And that's what's great about these little packets is that the little packet actually will tell you in the text, what it is used for, uh, what is the appropriate purpose, what the side effects might be, and, and what concerns that they might have. So great question about um, diary. Of course, in this group as well, um, they have some interesting ones. Medilite here is a, again, has those um, electrolytes in case of a sun stroke issue. Um, there are medications for serious headaches like migraines, as well again, cramps um, as uh, assistance to those who are menstruating and so many other different great things. If someone's backbone is aching, what should they do? The next question on our list. Um, if someone's back is hurting, if someone's heart is hurting, um, if someone's brain is hurting, these are all very serious things. And I think the best case here is to make sure that that person sees a doctor, sees a nurse, sees an adult first, um, because those are injuries that could be more serious. Now, there's lots of times that our ankle hurts and it's not broken. There's lots of times that our finger might hurt and it's not going to fall off. But it's always best to make sure that others know when someone is injured or feeling uncomfortable. And so if someone's back is hurting, it's best to rest, consider what might have caused it, and to seek additional attention if necessary. Another question is what to do if someone's eye is bleeding? 
Again, I is a very difficult and complicated uh, process. Luckily, most times that something is bleeding, it's going to heal itself. One of the best examples of this is an eye or a mouth because there's so much um, liquid and white blood cells uh, and the little tubes are so narrow in those spaces that luckily the body is able to heal itself. In these cases, we aren't able to use um, those uh, special um, creams that I talked about, that neosporin that we discussed. Uh, let me just quickly go back to the website for those who haven't gotten to write it down. Um, we can't use those little creams that I talked about because um, these are only good for the outside of you and the eye and the mouth are inside. But um, luckily those places will heal on their own. Just remember, if there's something stuck there or it's a real emergency, that's again where you have to see a doctor or additional help um, so that they are able to assist. Coming down to the final question I think here, uh, maybe just one or two more. This one is a question that comes all the way from Libya. Um, and the question is, what's the first move for heat stroke? The first decision for heat stroke and heat stroke and heat exhaustion are very similar. Um, but in both cases, you want to make sure that that person is in the shade, that that person is resting, um, and then there's a few different steps that you can take, including elevating the legs so that there's more blood in the core body and especially around the brain. You want to take a time to fan the person, right? To give them an opportunity to drink, but especially with heat stroke, the danger is that if you were to put ice on that person or dump water on that person, there's a risk that their body would be so scared and so um, worried that actually the person could, um, uh, for, for the kids, they could faint, right? Um, but actually it's much worse than fainting. It's called going into shock. And that's where the whole body shuts down like your computer might. And that's very, very scary and very bad. And that's why you want to be gentle and slow in helping someone with heat stroke to recover. Um, in the case of heat stroke, the person won't even be sweating. That's how scared that that person's body is. Someone with heat exhaustion will be sweating. They'll be breathing you know, heavily and they'll be trying to cool themselves down. Someone who has heat stroke is really in danger and maybe even needs to see a doctor in fact, should see a doctor if they are not um, sweating uh, or really are at that extent. Um, but sometimes that's not always possible while hiking. That's why carrying pocket kits like this are so important. And that's why I appreciate all of you guys taking this class, taking the time to learn about what you can put into a pocket kit. Thank you all for joining us. I can't wait um, to answer all of your questions for years to come, including next year. Uh, my very best to all of you. And I'll turn it over to Alfredo, who I think is going to put this week's challenge code into the chat. So thank you all for coming. Live the dream. And I am so glad that you joined our course. Thanks again. Bye, everybody. I hope you've gotten the code. Thanks for joining everyone. Hope you enjoy your next sessions. Thanks so much for coming here today.